Hello, this is Lynn Jenkins. One of the next big issues Congress will tackle is global climate change and the regulation of greenhouse gas emissions through a cap-and-trade program. This whole idea is extremely complicated and will undoubtedly affect each and every one of us. And as your representative in Washington, it's so important for me to know how you feel. Recently, I asked folks to send me their thoughts and questions about cap-and-trade. I received a lot of great ideas and some very important questions, and I want to thank everyone who participated. I'm sorry if I did not get to your specific comment, but believe me, every response will be very helpful as Congress works through this issue. One proposal that Congress is considering is a cap-and-trade program. The goal of a cap-and-trade program is to cut greenhouse gas emissions. Under such a program, the government would set a limit on total greenhouse gas emissions. The limit would gradually tighten over a period of years. According to the proposal offered by Representatives Henry Waxman and Edward Markey, greenhouse gas emissions would be cut 17% from 2005 levels by 2020 and cut 80% in the next 40 years. The government would also be responsible for issuing emission rights, or so-called allowances, to regulated industries consistent with the cap. To continue to produce carbon, entities will have to obtain permits, either in the form of purchasing credits or being given allowances. These permits will cost money, and businesses will pass the increased cost directly on to the consumer, almost as if it were a tax. Even President Obama has recognized this, saying in January of 2008 that if he successfully capped greenhouse gas emissions, power plants would have to re retrofit their operations and, I quote, that cost would be passed on to consumers. Richard Grundahl from Tonganoxi said he's concerned cap-and-trade is a disguise for a new tax. Well, Richard, you're exactly right, and you don't have to take my word for it. Even the former chairman of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, John Dingell, a Democrat from Michigan, said, and I quote, cap and trade is a tax, and it's a big one. Now, I'm not a climatologist and don't claim to have all the answers, but my roots in agriculture and my professional experience as a CPA tell me that this cap and trade proposal is not the right approach. There's no doubt we can do better Take, and take better care of our environment, and we definitely need to reduce our dependence on foreign sources of energy. At a time when families and small businesses are struggling to make ends meet, hitting them with a national energy tax is not something that I can support. President Obama proposed a cap-and-trade program in his budget that would generate $646 billion in new tax revenue that would be paid for by every American who considers flipping a light switch on. To make matters worse, just this week we learned that White House, the White House ignored an internal memo warning that the Environmental Protection Agency's decision to classify carbon dioxide as a pollutant is like to ha likely to have serious economic consequences for businesses small and large across the country. Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, and President Obama have made it a priority to pass cap and trade this year. And it seems they put politics and special interests ahead of middle-class families and small businesses struggling through this recession.